Welcome back to RC Model Reviews, and what a piece of crap that is. Well, I thought it was a piece of crap, but now I really like it. Right now, you're probably wondering whether I've lost my mind, and I've, I was beginning to think that I had, because when this Cicada 180 race quad arrived on my desk, I thought, great, a plug and fly says, or well, plug and play says on the box, plug and play. I'll throw a receiver in it and I'll go flying. And indeed, I had a look around. The only receivers I had were these XSR receivers, which are a little bit big for this, but I shoehorned one in. And I fired it up and off we went. And this is what it looked like. To be honest, it was horrible. There was jello and the, the focus was all bad and it was flickering. It was like terrible. I thought, what a piece of rubbish we've got here. So I landed it and had a look, see what was happening. Now, if you see here this, look at the camera here. The camera lens was loose. The locking ring wasn't even done up. So it had it vibrated and unwound. And that's why I had the fuzzy picture. And that's also why we had the jello because the camera lens was moving. So I tightened that up, put it back in the air and everything was much, much better. Since then, I've flown this thing a lot and I'm growing to really like it. Now, when I first looked at it, I also thought, Oh, why would you buy one of these, a 180, when, you know, 180, 190 bucks, you can get one of these fantastic Viflies, brilliant machine. And so I was doing a comparison really between the Viefly and the Cicada 180. And I was thinking, well, you know, this hasn't got as much punch. It's, it's not under two, not sub 250 grams. It's, you know, I was, I was, it's got a CMOS camera. There were a lot of negatives associated with this little quad. And I was getting to the point where I thought, no, oh, you know, it is maybe even though it flies good now, uh, the, you know, the image from the FPV is not that flash. And so I was getting a bit negative in the headspace about this thing. And that's one thing you've got to watch when you're a reviewer. If you get too negative, it's easy to overlook the good points and simply focus on the bad points. That, that negativity feeds on itself. So I did a review. I even went so far as to upload it to YouTube. And then I gave myself some time because I got sick. And I came back and had a look at that review and I thought, no. And then I flew the quad some more and I thought, no, definitely not. This is actually a really good little quad. And I'll tell you why. It's all about the V word. The V word value. Now, as you know, I absolutely love the Vifly 150 to death, but it's 190 odd dollars, right? I couldn't believe the price of that thing when I looked it up on the interwebs. I hadn't looked at the price when I did the first review. I thought, you know, it's probably about the same price. It's a little bit bigger. So it's, and it's got... Let's go through the specs, shall we? 1407 motors here. These are 1407 motors. It's quite a big motor, actually. Um, and it's only running four inch two bladed props, but you get a bit of power out of these things. It's got a CMOS camera. Yeah, it's not a CCD, so that's a negative. It's got a carbon frame. It's got a the video transmitter. Wait for this. Wait for the video transmitter. It's 40 channels and it's switchable. 25, 200, 500 and 800 milliwatts. Do not use 800 milliwatts. You will shoot your eye out with 800 milliwatts. It will cook your lunch for you with 800 milliwatts. There's no reason on earth to have 800 milliwatts there, but if you want it, it's there. So the, the video transmitter is pretty high spec. It, it, it seems to work pretty well, actually. Once I switched it from 25 to 200, the video was working much better. And all in all, you know, not so bad. Now, so it's plug and play, so you put your own receiver in there. I'd recommend an XSM rather than an XSR because the R is a little bit bigger. I had to shoehorn it in, which also got me a bit negative because it required me to do some work. Now, it has a button on the side for changing your settings of your video transmitter. It has a pit mode as well. And it can be, I think it has smart audio from memory, did it? I can't remember. Yeah, I'm not sure, I can't remember. But um, inside we've got an F4 flight controller. Now this comes in two versions. It comes in a base edition and an advanced edition. We've got the advanced edition here, so it's got some extra spec. Um, the motors are a bit bigger than the, than the base version and has an F4 flight controller, beta flight, OSD, current shunt, so it tells you how many milliamps you've used, tells you how many amps you're drawing, and it has a barometer. Now, this is a really cool feature. I kind of like this. It has a barometer on board, so there's actually the ability to use the beta flight OSD's altimeter. It'll show you your altitude. Now, it's really, really laggy, and it's not very accurate, but it's enough to let you know you're staying under the 120 meter maximum altitude allowed in most countries. It's kind of cool. I mean, and again, it is such, it's about a hundred dollars. This is, a, it's about a hundred dollars. It's, you know, just over half the price of this thing. And you get all those features. So the question I was asking myself is, why would anyone want to buy one of these? And the first review I was thinking, why would anyone waste their money on one of these things? It's, you know, and then when I realized it's a hundred dollar, hundred dollar quad, and to give you an indication, 
Previously, what you get for 100 bucks was something like this, the Baby Hawk. Now, the Baby Hawk's a fine little quad, but seriously, it is nothing like this quad. This is carbon. It's got some real grunt. You know, these has got tiny little motors. It's got some really serious motors. You can use some decent sized batteries on here. And it says in the book up to 850 milliamps, I think. And I tried it with these 650 Gen's Ace Tattoo batteries. They're too small. You don't get enough flight time. So just, just for shirts and giggles, I put a 1300 three cell on there, like I use on my five inch quads. And it, hold, it flies really well. This is the best battery I've found for it. Because I, I'm not a, someone who needs a lot of power. I like proximity. And with a 1300 three cell on here, this thing flies for ages and it's still got plenty of power to punch out, to go through the gaps, to do everything, aerobatics. So it means if you start with one of these, if you're someone who wants to get going or you want one of these or if you've already got a five inch quad, you can use some of your old battery packs on here. You don't have to buy new packs because I had to go out and buy this pack. And do you know how much that cost me? Have a guess, folks. Here in New Zealand, where lipos don't grow on trees, that 650 milliamp Tattoo battery, four cell, it cost me $35. Honestly, 35 bucks. I had to buy two of them for testing these little quads. Bought them locally. Man, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Now, you know, buy the three cell ones from Hobby King, and, you know, you're paying next to nothing for these things. They're like, you know, they grow on trees almost, as I said. So there you go. This is um, a fantastic. And with that, with that 800 milliwatts, as long as you wear eye protection, because you don't want to shoot your eye out, you can fly through some really thick wooded areas and you're still going to get a signal so if you're proximity flyer like me that's brilliant and the thing is with at a hundred and something just over a hundred bucks why would you not buy one of these and throw it in the glove box of your truck or your car or your wife's handbag so that when you're out and about if you spot somewhere to go flying you've got a quad here and you don't care if you lose that if you lose that it's like losing two two weeks worth of starbucks coffee money it's not a lot of money so i went from thinking this was a piece of crap because the quality control wasn't up to it and the camera was poorly focused um to thinking that this is a great piece of kit and it's not going to break any speed records it's not people aren't going to go ooh and ah and be impressed by its agility but for a hundred bucks it's hard not to be impressed by the value you get from this thing it's just like and i've put it through the ring or i've really hammered this thing now for several weeks and i'm just loving it it's great uh, you know with this thing this is the vifly is a fantastic performer but you know I, I like this too much to go out and risk it too much so this thing, oh, I don't care, I'll fly it, I'll try and fly this through, you know, through the eye of a needle. And if I hit the thing, I don't care. If I smash this into a million pieces, I don't really care because it would only be $100 to replace it. That's nothing really in today's market. So, woohoo, yeah, I'd have to say it's a K to 180 race quad from Lightus RC. It's a definite, why would you not buy this thing? Seriously, why would you not buy it? What do you get in the box? Better tell you. You get the quad, you get this antenna, which seems to work satisfactorily enough. You get... Two sets of props, and as you'll see, I'm on my second pair. Don't ask how that happened. I don't know. Someone lost the first pair, I suspect. And you get a spanner. I don't know. Um, something look, probably looks something like that because I've lost it, and I've got so many of these things now. I'm just collecting them. And I think there's also a couple of bits of foam. And uh, it's, it's really, this is basically you get the quad, not much else, in the plug and play version. And as I say, this is the advanced version, so this is the one you want to go for. Don't bother with the standard version. It's about ten or fifteen dollars cheaper, but you're going to get weaker motors. You're only going to get an F3 flight controller without the current shunt and all the other fancy bells and whistles. So yeah, go, you know, spend big, spend big, go for the hundred and something dollar one. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun, honestly. And here's today's question for those of you who are eagle-eyed. What does this look like? I mean, I thought, saw this and I thought, that looks an awful lot like some other quad that um, a brand name manufacturer released some time ago now. And should we be charitable and say it's been inspired by that? Um, yeah. Now, just a quick look around, I suppose, while well, I've got it upside down. It's got about, what is it, two, two millimeter carbon arms, not really thick by today's standards, with a plastic protection underneath which stiffens them up quite a bit feet on the ends of the motors um, this is a circuit board i'm not really a fan of circuit boards on the bottom because if you were to land on a really or crash onto a really jagged rock you could damage that board uh, you could put a piece of plastic over there if you wanted to i suppose but again for a hundred bucks why would you even worry just fly it till it breaks and buy another one it's like the disposable fun little quad and you can keep it in your car fantastic so when your wife's out shopping and she drags you along as she does you can just, while she's trying clothes on, you can go outside and dive the building with one of these because you can put it in a handbag before you leave. Fantastic stuff. Anyway, there you go. That's my quick look at the Cicada 180 race quad. Uh, 
I like it. I like it a lot, even though I hated it when I first got it because the QC wasn't really up to scratch. That camera should never have come unfocused, really. That's really, really bad. There you go. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and uh, I will now get on with some other stuff sitting here that I know everyone's been waiting to see. Bye for now.